In this lecture, we are going to talk about a famous problem in probability that actually comes from a TV show. The TV show was called Let's Make a Deal, and its host was named Monty Hall. So we call this the Monty Hall problem. The problem goes like this: You are on a game show, and you have to pick a door. There are three doors. Behind one of the doors, there is a car, and behind the two other doors, there are goats. I will assume that you'd rather have a car than a goat. I could be wrong, but for the purpose of this lecture, let's assume that most of us would rather get a car than a goat. Before we continue on with this lecture, just a short reminder that we are already two weeks into the month-long VIP sale of my latest course on PyTorch. After releasing the leading TensorFlow 2 course on Udemy, I thought it would be an excellent idea to teach PyTorch 2, the next up-and-coming major deep learning library. In fact, many indicators suggest that this era is already here. Companies like OpenAI and Apple have switched to PyTorch, and Facebook, who is now the primary developer of PyTorch, obviously uses it as well to serve their billions of users. Today, most research papers are implemented in PyTorch, so I think the evidence is clear where the field of deep learning is going. Use the link in the description below to get your copy of the VIP version of PyTorch today. Remember that the VIP version contains entire sections of material that will not be available in the non-VIP version of the course. This course contains everything from the basics like ANNs, CNNs, and RNNs, all the way up to transfer learning, recommender systems, GANs, NLP, facial recognition, and building a stock trading bot using deep Q learning. Again, these coupons expire in a month, and we're already two weeks in, so get your copy today. So how does this game work? Well, it goes like this: you pick a door, but you do not get to see what is behind it. Without loss of generality, let's say you pick door number one. Next, the host, who knows what is behind each of the doors, opens one of the doors you did not choose, and he must always reveal one of the goats. Let's say he opens door number two, and it's a goat. To make this clear, the host of the game show. Must open one of the doors you did not choose, and he must open a door that has a goat behind it. Therefore, it will always be the case that whatever door Monty Hall opens, it will be a goat. The next question you have to answer is: Do you stay with door number one, or do you switch to door number three? Your job is to pick a door that does not contain a goat, and so the real question is. Does Monty Hall opening some other door to reveal the goat help you in any way? Now this might seem like a silly question at first. You might think it doesn't matter if you switch or not. The probability of a car behind being door number one or door number three is still one third. However, if this is the conclusion you came to, I would recommend pausing this video and thinking about it a little more in the context of Bayes' rule. I'll give you a minute to think about it, and then you can return to this video. Okay, so in this formulation, we are going to assume you chose door number one to begin with, as we stated earlier. So that's a given. You can write it out if you want, but it would appear in every expression, so I'm not going to show it at all. Now, let's say the random variable c represents where the car is. C equals one means the car is behind door number one, and C equals two means the car is behind door number two, and C equals three means the car is behind door number three. Let's let the random variable h represent which door Monty Hall opens. Remember that in our setup, Monty Hall opens door number two without loss of generality. It doesn't really matter which we use since the problem is symmetric, so let's just assume two. So we can define these conditional probabilities. P of h equals two given c equals one is equal to zero point five. P of h equals two given c equals two is zero. P of h equals two given c equals three is one. Let's look at why these are defined this way. Remember that you chose door number one. So if the car is actually behind door number one, which corresponds to c equals one, then Monty Hall will open either of the other doors. He can choose either one because he just wants to show you a goat. Therefore, it doesn't matter which door Monty Hall chooses, either two or three, if the car is behind door number one. But if you chose door number one 
and the car is behind door number two, then Monty Hall can open door number two because he doesn't want to show you the car. So the probability of that is zero. So if C equals two, then H equals two is not possible according to the rules of this game. Similarly, if the car is behind door number three, then Monty Hall has to open door number two because that's the only door left with a goat. That is, if C equals three, then Monty Hall has no choice but to open door number two. So H equals two given C equals three with probability 100%. Next, let's think about what probability we are looking for. We want to know if we should stick with door number one or switch to door number three. So we want to calculate P of C equals three given H equals two and P of C equals one given H equals two. That is the probability of the car being behind door number three given that Monty Hall opens door number two and the probability of the car being behind door number one given that Monty Hall opens door number two. And of course, we should recognize that this is just Bayes' rule. Remember, Bayes' rule, conceptually speaking, is a way of switching around the givens. On the previous slide, we had P of H given C, and now we want P of C given H. Let's start by writing out the expression for the probabilities that we want. Considering P of C equals 3 given H equals 2 first, we have the following. First, we can write this down as the joint over the marginal. However, we don't have either of these quantities. What we do have is P of H given C. So let's replace the top and bottom with P of H given C times P of C. As you recall, this is just Bayes' rule. Now you might wonder, how do we know what P of C should be? Well, this is just the prior probability that a car is behind any one of the doors without any other information. We can assume this is one third since there is no reason to believe that the producers of the show would be biased towards any particular door. After plugging in the relevant values, what do we get? Well, this probability comes out to one times one over three, all over one half times one third, plus zero times one third, plus one times one third. And that is all equal to two thirds. Note that we can do a similar calculation for P of C equals one given h equals two. I'll presume we don't need to derive Bayes' rule again, so let's just plug in the numbers. After doing so, we get one half times one third, all over one half times one third, plus zero times one third, plus one times one third. And this is all equal to one third. So we have our answer. We should always switch to door number three because that gives us double the chance of winning.